The Amazing Race Season 20 premiered tonight on CBS, something I've been looking forward to for a very long time now, and it was a great show. Let's start off with a little disclaimer. If you're going to audition for The Amazing Race, please, for the love of God, learn how to drive a stick shift. They're in every race, people. Catch a clue. So Phil sends all of the racers out into the vineyard to pull down tethered balloons to get their very first clue. It's a mad dash into the vineyard. Some do great, and as usual, some do really bad. Now this first show was a race for first place and a race for last place. The pack was like <clears throat> divided. Okay, so within the first few minutes... Um, they get their clues, they go off to the next place, it's a roadblock, and one person has to skydive from 10,000 feet, and the other person has to read a map, figure out where their person is going to land, go get them, and get them off the mat that they land on. The person who lands can't leave until their partner is there. So that's how the two-man roadblock works. Now, within a few minutes, it's really sad when your title is the ambassador lap to laughter, the ambassador of laughter, and you're the very first person to cry on Amazing Race. The clown was crying within 10 minutes. Not so good for your career there. Now, Country Boys Can Survive was being sung by Mark and William Bopper, and I kept thinking to myself, not if you keep racing this way. They're in the car on their way to the first clue, and Mark is literally hanging out the back of the car, throwing up. Now, I don't know about you, but if my partner gets car sick, I don't think I'm going to make them jump out of a plane the very next thing. But that's what they do. The, I guess you figure, well, his stomach's already pretty much empty. You might as well jump out of the plane. I don't know. But I felt really bad for his parachute guy because he lands and goes, oh, I got so sick up there. And I thought, oh, poor parachute guy because, you know, he's riding on his back, basically. Going down, throw up, going up. Ooh, not a good picture there. But I got to tell you, their story of these two know poverty. They know poverty very well. And they're getting a chance of a lifetime to experience things they would never experience other than the amazing race. Their first plane rides, jumping out of a plane, being in Argentina of all things. So while I don't think they're going to fare well in the race, I hope they do get as much out of the experience as they possibly can and see lots of things that um, inspire them. To Once the teams finished their roadblock, they moved on to the empanada challenge and there was an empanada Nazi there making sure they got it right and she wasn't letting anything pass her. They're in Argentina and they're making two different kinds of empanadas. They have to make 60 each. And the thing is, they had to be made differently, crimped differently on the edges. Art and JJ didn't bother to watch the whole thing and they raced off to start making their empanadas. Now Rachel Riley, who was there second, said, wait, 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 they're making it differently. She noticed right away that there was two ways and she went to go make her empanadas with Brendan. Art and JJ fell behind because they didn't pay attention to this. Um, Dave and Rachel, the Army husband and wife team, she's not in the Army, uh, did very well on this task. And, um, and then teams, uh, Neri and Jamie from the FBI, also did very well. Now, the race for last place was just as intriguing to watch as the race for first place because I couldn't believe how much bumbling was going on. Maya and Misi were the last to get their tethered balloon, and then one of them got the car stuck in the sand while the other one was jumping out of a plane. But they managed to get the car pulled out. She's the last person pulled off the mat. They catch up to everybody who's in the back of the pack at the empanada making challenge. And even though they're the last, they beat the Guidos, who don't know how to drive a stick shift, even though their mama told them to do it. Always, always listen to your mama. So Maya and Misia beat the Guidos. Now, the clowns had moved up, and um, and the country boys had, had come in already. And so it's this race to the end between the Guidos and Maya and Misia. Maya and Misia surpassed the Guidos. They come from behind, and they beat the empanada challenge, and they go racing off to Phil. Now, they are literally... Within eyesight of Phil, I'm not kidding you, 
there and they didn't turn their heads to the right. I mean, literally all they had to do was go like this and they would have seen Phil. And the look on Phil's face as they turned around and walked away and started going searching off all over the place. They threw their race away. It was the most amazing thing. All they had to do, literally, they're walking across the field this way. Phil's over here. Look right here, right here. Just turn your head. That's all you have to do. No, they didn't turn their head at all. Turned around, marched into the field, turned around, marched out. Unbelievable. What a sad way to end your amazing race and to think that the Guidos beat them. Oh, sad. So anyhow, the back of the pack, not really good racers. The front of the pack, oh my gosh, this is going to be such a competitive season. The women in the front of the pack are no joke. They're physically fit. They're smart. They're competitive. Now, in the middle of the pack, we had what I call the also-rans because they got very little airtime and you basically didn't remember them. And that was twins, Elliot and Andrew. And then there were the cousins, um, Carrie and Stacy, and the dating divorcees, Vanessa and Ralph. We're going to see more Vanessa next week because, as we all know, CBS loves to play up the Brenchel drama. They want to keep the haters of Brendan and Rachel around as much as they want to keep all their fans around. You know, during the last season of Big Brother, they really played up um, people disliking Rachel. They call them the couple you love to hate. But what they didn't realize is that Rachel ran, won over a lot of fans, and I think she's going to do it again. But CBS right now is really trying to play up the um, drama with Rachel Riley and Vanessa. And Vanessa and Rachel Brown have already made snide comments, and Phil Keegan has tweeted several times and made. Um, done interviews and in those interviews he says from the very first moment that they were at the race people were um, giving them evil looks and not being nice from the moment the race started so it's not anything Rachel did you know it's just the way it is you know when catty girls are competitive and that's the way things go the other thing is I uh, was surprised to see the reaction of fans or, or people on Twitter and different places when Brendan made a joke. Some of y'all need to try on a sense of humor once in a while. He was in the car, the Border Patrol agents were ahead of him, and he goes, I'm Mexican, so I already don't like him very much. I'm half Mexican, so it was a joke, people. Try to laugh once in a while. Not everything is meant in an ugly way, and Brendan was just making a joke. Whether or not it was funny, that doesn't matter. <laughs> the point is, it wasn't meant in the I hate Border Patrol people really way. And so, okay, so your first place was da Dave Brown and Rachel Brown. He's the Army guy and his wife. Then it came in Brendan and Rachel from Big Brother. Art and JJ, the bar, uh, the, um... Border Patrol guys, Neri and Jamie, FBI, and who was eliminated? Maya and Misia, who just couldn't bother to turn their heads to the right. I cannot wait for next week's Amazing Race. I hope you tune in, and we'll talk then.